Well, greetings to my church family. I hope you're all feeling well and breathing easy. I want you to know that as your pastors, we miss you very much. We miss being with you. And uh, we're looking forward to the day when we can reconvene, when we can gather back together as a church family to worship in a corporate setting once again. And I know you're looking forward to that as well. In the meantime, there are a couple of thoughts I wanted to share with you today. The first one comes by way of confession. You know, I've been observing my own behavior and attitudes and thoughts over the last few weeks, and I noticed that I've been unusually irritable. Like I noticed that I'm like disproportionately upset by things that normally wouldn't bother me very much at all. And that bothered me. But I kind of chalked it up to, you know, the stress and the anxiety of this particular season of our lives. But a couple of days ago, it occurred to me that what I'm probably experiencing is grief, that I'm grieving. I'm grieving the loss of community. I'm grieving the loss of that human connection that I miss being with you. And one of the phases or one of the stages of grief, if you will, is anger. And uh, I share this with you uh, for a couple of reasons. A, so that if this is happening to you, uh, and you're experiencing anger or depression or high anxiety, you might understand that this is very normal, that you may ex be experiencing grief as well. So A, you can be kind to yourself, extend grace to yourself, and B, you can extend grace to others as they may be feeling like that as well. So hopefully that's encouraging to you. The other thought I have today is I'd like to share with you a quote it's a quote that's been going around on social media, on the internet, so you might have seen it already. But it's a quote by a Christian leader who has some thoughts about how do we love each other at a time like this. I want to share this with you. And the quote says this, Very well, by God's decree, the enemy has sent us poison and deadly awful. Therefore, I shall ask God mercifully to protect us. Then I shall fumigate, help purify the air, administer medicine, and take it. I shall avoid places and persons where my presence is not needed in order not to become contaminated and thus perchance infect and pollute others and so cause their death as a result of my negligence. If God should wish to take me, he will surely find me. And I have done what he has expected of me, and so I am not responsible for either my own death or the death of others. If my neighbor needs me, however, I shall not avoid place or person, but will go freely. When I saw that quote, I was expecting that to have been written by a contemporary church leader. Turns out it was signed by Martin Luther in the 16th century. Uh, apparently, they were experiencing a plague during Martin Luther's day. Now, I've thought a lot about that quote since then, and I really like it because I think it's very helpful for helping us to discern what does love look like. So, for example, two days after we sent out the email alerting everyone that church was canceled and they were no longer having any more in-person gatherings or in-person ministry until further notice, two days after we sent out that email, I sent out another email asking for help with a moving crew because there's a, a widow in our community who needed help moving. And I thought, hmm, is this a little contradictory to send out one message that says, stay home, don't go outside, don't gather in groups, and then send out another message that says, come outside, help us gather in groups. I thought, well, I went ahead and sent out the email. And I'm sure that some of you thought, you know what? I have some elderly relatives or I have friends or close family who are in the high risk category and I don't think I would be loving them well by doing this particular moving crew. And so you declined on this round of moving crew. Others of you no doubt thought, you know, I'm not high risk. I'm going to be very careful not to spread anything to anyone else. I'm going to go ahead and take the risk of helping with this moving crew. And so in some cases, what love looks like is to withdraw 
from other people, believe it or not. Who would ever think we would say something like that? Sometimes love, in this case, looks like withdrawing and keeping a distance from people. Other times, love looks like leaning in, engaging, connecting, serving, blessing other people. And I want to say thank you to both groups, those of you who refrained from helping and those of you who jumped in to help. And we had plenty of help and we got it done in record time. But thank you to both of you for loving people well. One other example is a couple of days ago, the Bloodmobile was here in Lindsberg. And I thought, again, do I go? Do I keep my appointment? But you know, it's very difficult to donate blood or to draw blood from a posture of six foot social distancing, right? So I decided to keep my appointment. And when I was there, I asked the man in charge, I said, hey, I'm curious, have you had a lot of cancellations? Have a lot of your donors called in and said, you know what, it's too risky. I don't feel comfortable doing this. I'm canceling my appointment. He said, no, to the contrary. Actually, we've had many, many walk-ins. We've had twice as many donors in recent days than we normally do. And in fact, I saw at least three of you at that bloodmobile a couple of days ago. And so again, I want to thank both those of you who stayed away out of love for others and those of you who took the risk to come and donate blood. Sometimes love looks like withdrawing and keeping a distance to protect other people from harm. And sometimes love looks like leaning in and connecting and serving and blessing other people. And you are doing both. And you're doing both very well, I think. Many of you have called in and told us, hey, if there's someone who needs help, please let me know because I really want to help. I'll help any way I can. And I believe you. And I thank you. Thank you for being the church. Thank you for being willing to serve and to bless, even at risk to yourself. Thank you for being the body of Christ during this time. I want you to know that we love you. We miss you. We're praying for you. And we look forward to gathering with you again, hopefully very soon. God bless you.